Now that you have configured the bull bar, established wireless communications, created a test template and prepared a part program, you are ready to run your first test. Open the bull bar 20 program group, double click advanced mode and then click set up and run a bull bar test. Open the folder for the machine that you would like to test and you are presented with a list of test templates for that machine. As this is the first time this bull bar has been used, there is only the test we created earlier. Note that from this screen you can also add, edit or delete tests, or select a test from another location on your PC or network. Let's select the XY 360 degree calibrated test that we prepared in the previous chapter. Click the right arrow to proceed. If you wish to enter any pretest comments, now is the time to do so. These comments can be very useful later on as they can provide background information on why the test was carried out and the test conditions. This is particularly true if you are reviewing the test history for a particular machine. Next, we can load the part program we created in the previous chapter and save it to a USB drive so that it can be transferred to the CNC control. Click the part program generator button and then click the open file button. Select the part program and click open. This is your last opportunity to double check and edit the part program before it is transferred to the machine. Plug your USB drive in. Click the save icon and browse to the memory stick. You may also wish to rename the file at this point for compatibility with your control. For example, 8001, then save. Click the left arrow to return to the summary screen. Remove the USB stick from the PC and plug it into the control. You may wish to stop or unmount the device in Windows before unplugging. This is typically achieved via an icon down here in the system tray. Transfer the part program from the memory stick to the control. Be sure to test the program carefully. Carry out a dry run at reduced feed rate with your finger ready to hit the hold button should something happen unexpectedly. You want to be sure the machine moves are clear of the table, fixturing and within machine controller limits. If your PC's Bluetooth wireless is not turned on or the dongle is not plugged in, you must do that now before proceeding to the next screen. Turn the bull bar on by twisting the end cap in a clockwise direction. Make sure it is tight against the stop but do not over tighten. Check that the LED has turned green. Click the right arrow. The software will always try to connect to the last bull bar used. If you use this particular bull bar last and your Bluetooth radio is functioning correctly, you will see the bull bar reading and the serial number on the screen. If this is the first time you have used this bull bar or there is no reading on the screen, click the drop down arrow next to the port field and select QC20W. If you see a bull bar icon with the serial number of your bull bar on it, select it and click OK. If there is no icon for your bull bar, click search. It is sometimes necessary to search twice to locate a new bull bar. Once your bull bar has been found, select it and click OK. As this is a calibrated test, the absolute length of the bull bar has to be set on the zero de calibrator. Check that the balls and seats on the calibrator are clean and undamaged. Take a piece of the supplied cleaning material and press it into each of the seats. Dirt and contaminants will adhere to it, leaving the calibrator clean and ready to use. Now you can place the bull bar into the calibrator. Make sure that the serial number here matches the serial number on the calibrator. If not, select it. This is a good time to verify the last calibration date of the zero dir. Renishaw suggests a 12 month recalibration interval for the QC20W. Set the bull bar length by clicking the calibrate button. To ensure that the calibration is good and that the device is repeatable, try removing the bull bar from the calibrator and placing it back in. The displayed reading should be unchanged. If you do see a difference, check that the pads on the zero dir calibrator and the bull bar balls are clean and undamaged. Before proceeding to data capture, you need to make sure that the tool cups are clean and then attach them to the machine. Clean the cups by pressing them into the cleaning compound. This will remove any accumulated dirt or swarf from the magnets. Locate a suitable holder for your tool cup. A 12mm or a half inch collet can be used to hold the tool cup extension. Insert the extension, 
tighten the collet and attach the tool cup. Place the tool holder in the spindle. Note that when mounting the tool cup to the spindle in this manner, it is important to ensure that the spindle is locked and cannot rotate. Any rotation of the spindle will result in a test error. Many bull bar users prefer to utilise a magnetic base located on the spindle housing or bearing face. The tool cup and optional extension pieces have M8 by 1.25mm threads that are compatible with many popular bases. The base can then be attached to the spindle housing but be careful to check that it is firmly mounted and not likely to move. Place the centre mount in the desired location on the machine table. Move the lever to unlock and allow the cup to fall to its lowest position and drop the setting ball into place. Now jog the spindle into position on the X and Y axes, just above the tool cup but offset to one side. We want to allow ourselves some safety margin when we drop the Z axis down. Now carefully jog down the Z until the tool cup is roughly 4 or 5 millimetres above the setting ball. With the Z axis in position you can jog in X and Y to bring the centre mount directly under the tool cup or you can slide the mount into position. As the setting ball aligns with the tool cup the magnet may jump into position. Take care to ensure that it is upright and not at its vertical limit of movement. Finally ensure it is firmly seated by holding the ball in place while you move the lever into its lock position. Establish the G54 offset so that the current position is X0, Y0, Z0. Jog the Z axis up so that you can remove the setting ball. Take care to ensure that only the Z axis moves and that it is in the positive direction. Remove the setting ball and put it back in the storage case for safekeeping. If you have not already done so, you should now load and test the part program before you attach the ball bar. Once you are sure that the part program is working correctly, press cycle start to position the machine to the start point. The M00 command will cause the program to wait while you load the ball bar. Load the ball bar into the machine, taking care that the balls are firmly engaged with the magnetic cups. Before starting data capture, you can also choose how many times you would like the test to repeat by setting the number of iterations. The results of each repeat test will be saved as a separate test file. This is a useful feature for testing the repeatability of a machine over time or varying environmental conditions. By clicking the forever checkbox, the test will repeat continuously until you click the stop button. As discussed previously, you can enter a temperature for the machine, but it is important that you fully understand the implications of doing so. Applying thermal compensation to the bull bar test will give you an estimate of the results that could be expected if the machine was tested at a nominal 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Please refer to the temperature compensation section of the help file for more details. To start the test, click the cycle start button and then press cycle start on the control. When the ball bar software detects the initial 1.5mm feed-in, the data capture sequence commences. The auto-scaling plot shows the progress of the test from the lead-in move, through the data capture, and finally the lead-out. The program then pauses for 5 seconds before commencing the return run. Finally, a 1.5mm feed-out signals the software that the test is complete. Wait a few seconds for the analysis to be completed and then check to see if there is a green check mark adjacent to each run. A yellow warning triangle or red fail symbol indicates a possible test error and you may want to rerun the test before saving. To save the test, click the save icon. Bullbar 20 automatically names the file for you, so click Save to store the test results in the machine folder. Finally, click OK to add the test to the machine history archive, or cancel if you do not want to include this test. We'll discuss the history feature later in this presentation. You have now completed your Bullbar test and are viewing the results in the Bullbar diagnostic screen. The next chapter will review this screen and take a look at the wealth of useful information that the Bullbar test provides.